Welcome back. Today we're replacing a pressure switch on this Central Pneumatic 125 PSI compressor. This job is honestly pretty consistent across any compressor. So if you don't have the same one, fret not because we're going to go over the same sort of principles and applications that you'll need to do to get it changed on yours. I had got this compressor for free. So let's see how much money we need to put into it to get it back functioning. I already did an oil change on this thing, which I strongly advise you checking it before you turn this thing on. I'll show a video of that here in the top right, so if you want to check that out, you can. Let's get to fixing this and going over what the heck a pressure switch does and is. So here we are um, by the pressure switch. Again, there's two issues that are going on right now. The on-off switch isn't working, which honestly makes me question the entire integrity of the pressure switch itself. If you didn't know, the pressure switch is basically a safety feature that helps to shut off the compressor when the tank hits the desired pressure. And the second issue that I'm running into is there's a leak. Now the leak is pretty easy to fix. Basically there's four screws and I'll show you here. Uh, underneath this little cover that we just take a little, there's a little screw down here. Obviously you wanna have the power off for this. So you take that screw off and then there's a little tab here that hooks on to the other side. You just take this off and this is the inner mechanism of the pressure switch. So there's four screws, one, two, three, and four, that compress this uh, pressure switch to the back of this mounting plate to a diaphragm on the back. So it looks like this. We have the manifold in the back, which is where the dials and all the gauges go. We have a manifold or the diaphragm. We have the plate like that. And then we have our switch. And then lastly, I can hold it all, we have the cover. So that's all that is. So the screws here attach all these four things together. So usually you'll hear a little leak in between the diaphragm and either the backing plate. Um, yeah, usually just between here and then the diaphragm. So you can just tighten up those four screws in a crisscross pattern and you're done. But again, my biggest concern is that this switch, even though it sounds like it's disengaging, isn't actually turning on or off the power. So let's figure that out. After lots of thought, because I believe in fixing stuff before just throwing parts at it, I feel like I'm just gonna replace this whole switch and housing. Because frankly, the manifold here on the other side, the screws have pretty much stripped out. So that's not gonna be good because we have to have a good tight seal around that diaphragm. And honestly, you know, it's questionable if it even works and if it's safe. And obviously this is a safety precaution. So for the 15 bucks that it cost me, put a link in the description. Here's my new one. So we're gonna have to take off everything here on this compressor, which honestly is not as bad as just replacing the pressure switch if you were just to replace this part here. But I'll show you how to do this whole thing. So let's start taking things off, starting with the wiring. Here's what you'll need to take care of this job. Of course, you'll need a new presser switch. You'll need some Teflon tape, wire brush just to clean up the threads, a screwdriver, either Phillips or Torx, just depends on the screws that are mounting the presser switch to the manifold. Some heat might be helpful in case those threads are really uh, seized on each other. Pipe wrench, potentially, you'll see why later. Socket and ratchet, you'll see why later. And various size uh, wrenches which I'll go through those specifics in the video. Everything, of course, will be linked down below so you can find it easily and do this job yourself. Let's get... So again, this line here comes from the powers, uh, from the plug. And then this bottom one goes into the compressor itself. Now we gotta get the two ground wires. Now we'll take off this line here. Take an adjustable or a 13 millimeter wrench to loosen this line. And same on the back side. This side's smaller at a 12. Now 
Here's that whole line. Now really it's just taking everything off as much as you need so that you can get rid of this uh, manifold here and switch. So obviously we gotta remove all of this right here as well as this top part right here. And yeah, I mean, again, it's easier if you don't have to take off as much, but you know, do what's easiest for you. We'll start here maybe with uh, removing that uh, valve or that gauge there. You might be able to see that there's a little uh, box end here that we can put a wrench on and we'll crack that loose. Every connection you take apart, you're going to have to put tape on, Teflon tape. So just to save yourself from having to do extra work, again, try and take off as big sections as you can. So I'm going to take off this whole section here. There's enough clearance. And then I don't have to retape this joint right here. There you go. Took itself apart. Now we want to get this little nipple here. And then I'll just loosely put it back in here so I don't have to rethink how everything went back together. Now, let's take off stuff on the back side here. All right. This thing's gonna be a challenge. It's best to get it while it's in the compressor, this relief valve, because obviously we got some holding it in place. But as you can see, it's starting to round off here. So as much as I'd like to use an open wrench on this, I think that's just gonna give us problems and then we're gonna to have to find a new one. Some of you might suggest just to get a new one, but the new part doesn't come with one and still looks like it's all right. So what I'm thinking here is let's put a little heat on this just to help expand that connection there, make it a little bit easier to come off as well as I'm gonna see if I can put a 14 millimeter deep socket on there by taking off this little ring. See if that'll help us out. Let's see if, let's see if this will work. Oh, nice, okay, perfect. Let's still give it a little bit of heat and then go from there. And there's always a question of what you're actually heating up and obviously we want the compressor off and no pressure in here, but um, we want to heat up the outside joint here because we want that to expand so that this smaller part can open up. And I'm just using a little butane torch here for creme brulee. All Cool, I don't wanna to touch it because I'm sure it's a little toasty. Now we can set that aside and we're almost home free. Now let's just remove the four screws that hold this pressure switch into the housing. See, I MacGyvered it here. I put different screws on that were bigger than the holes here at the time, but these things are so poorly stripped now that this thing is essentially useless and can't keep a tight seal. Now let's take this thing off. This thing is definitely gonna need some heat, so I'm gonna heat this up and then we'll wrench this manifold off.
Did you notice how I was struggling with that pipe wrench trying to get around the stupid handle? And my crazy brain didn't realize that I could just take these stu stupid thing off. Anyway, now you know how to take it off. Let's clean these threads up and put the new one on. Nice and crusty. Now obviously you want to ensure that your new presser switch has the same ports on the manifold, which as you can see here we have three, I guess technically four, we have four ports. Here's the old one, here's the new one, so we're good. We want to make sure it's compatible with the pressure here, so it's 125, this is also 125, 20 amp, so we are good to go. So first I want to put some tape on here. I do three or four rotations, and then remember to put it in the direction that you tighten. So remember, righty tighty, so we're gonna to wanna to have the tape circle around this way, because if we go this way, the tape will loosen as we put on that pressure switch. And don't judge me, I'm not really, I'm, the, I'm a beginner at Teflon tape, especially when it's sideways like this. There's two, there's three, just so I don't have to deal with doing this again. Let's do it four. Cool. Now, keep that on, Make sure we're not cross threading. See if we can just do this by hand. I think honestly that's good. Believe it or not, I actually think that's really good. The hard part about this orientation, I'll show you here on the old one, there's really no nice way to tighten it, right? Because usually it would be like this, put a wrench on here, and you could easily tighten that on. But face like this, at least on this type, Unless I'm crazy, there's no way to get a wrench on this without messing stuff up like this one. You can see what the jaws of the pipe wrench did here. Now I didn't care because obviously I'm getting rid of this, but when you put this one on, if you took everything off so you could tighten this, it'd be the same disaster. Now you could put something soft on there like rubber or even like a whole crap ton of cardboard, which I have done, believe it or not. But honestly, this kind of worked out with just using the whole unit to get some grip on there. So we'll see if it leaks. And then if it does, I'll stand corrected and we'll have to figure out a way to tighten this. But if it doesn't, then I just hope I saved myself some time and saved you some time. So although these look the same, and they pretty much are, I just want to double check before I get too far in here. I don't have to move any parts over. So first, I want to take off this box. Or the cover here, excuse me. And then I want to see if we can put this bypass here between these two spots. Because A, I want to make sure that I don't need to move this left or right um, to get this lined up perfectly since it is pretty uh, tight. And then I also want to make sure that this is not any different than this old one, which besides the color, it honestly looks like it's the exact same length so we should be okay but obviously better do this all first than have to take everything apart just to adjust this silly thing get them both in maybe at the same time got that one in got that one. oh yeah let's see here we go not too much resistance so honestly we might be good i don't feel really any excessive resistance everything's kind of threading on nicely so I say, 
We're good. Now you might ask me, well, why didn't you put Teflon tape on the threads there? You can see here, there's a little ferrule here on the end. I believe there's one down there. You start to see that ferrule, when you bring this nut around it and tighten it down, creates an extremely tight connection. It's the same in some of your plumbing fixtures if you have a compression fitting on your water shutoffs that makes this tight. So you don't need to put tape on there. I guess if you really want to, you can waste the tape, but this is just fine without it. Both are threaded on pretty nicely, so now let's just tighten them both up. All right, now I'm gonna put in the little nipple that goes in here and clean up the threads a bit. Oh, it's not coming apart, so must have done something right, right? All right, then we'll snug this guy. Nice and tight. Now same deal, put some tape on here, then push this regulator in. Let's see. I kind of want the gauge here at the top like it was before. There we go. That's good. I'll put our gauges on. Actually, let me tighten this connection here before I forget. Beautiful. Put a little Teflon on our gauge here, clean off the threads. Same thing for the other gauge that went up here. Clean the Teflon off that. And break fourteen. I'm guessing, yes sir. Here's our little pressure relief. So let's put some tape on it. You can see there inside, there's that little gasket that pushes down when the air comes out. So let's put some tape on there and tighten it up. Use my ratchet for this. Just because there's no way this thing is going to survive an open-ended wrench. The head of the ratchet here to tighten because if I use the end of the ratchet, that'll put way too much torque on this. Plenty, absolutely plenty. And then I have it facing down the holes or top and bottom just so, I don't know. I don't know if it really, maybe it does matter, but that way it's going toward the tank and up rather than toward this, this regulator. 
We're almost done. We gotta just put the electrical back in and let's try this sucker out. Okay, remember the bottom here is the line, the top here is the motor. So it's always easier to work on the bottom first than the top. So this is from the electrical, from the power. So go ahead and snake those wires through. And I think it's also easier to start with the ground. Can't really screw that up, can you? Maybe you can. All right, so it looks like, let's see if I can get you down here more. Maybe a little bit easier to put this in yet, but that's okay. In. Now I'm going to do the other ground, just while we have the room. Take this screw out. Make sure they're nice and tight. Line, motor, line, motor. Get the wire is in a little more. Hot line neutral. There we go. It's gonna be a tight fit. And then make sure to push, keep pressure on these connectors so they don't come out while you're tightening. There we go. There's one. Last two things and we're home free. So far already one thing's fixed, the stop or the off and on switch actually works. You can see there it's disconnecting so at least we're one problem fixed. Let's see if it actually runs, holds pressure, stays, and then builds up again without issue. I'm not gonna put the cover on now just in case um, we need to tighten up the screws here on the diaphragm in case there's a leak there or in case there's anything else we need to take apart. Might as well not put on the things that don't necessarily contribute to the integrity of the machine. Let's run it. You can see it's holding pressure. It's at 110 right now, which is I'm fine with. You can always adjust it here with the screws. Right there. Button work, so let's see, watch this. It's gonna be loud. Now we lost some pressure. Put on the reset. Can't hear a 
insert single thing here. I'm happy with it. $15 fix and we have this compressor up and working. If you haven't seen my video already on how to do an oil change on this thing, I'll link that in the top right of the video. Questions or comments, make sure to ask them below. As you can see here, I put this little ring back on. Now, obviously before you start it, make sure that the electrical looks good, it's nice and tight, as well as there's oil here in the back of the sight glass. Other than that, and of course, make sure that drain port at the bottom is closed and you're good to rock and roll. Hope the video was helpful. If you learned anything, give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already for more how-to videos coming up weekly. Thanks for watching. Make sure it hooks on, on that side. Tighten up the screw. Last little tip I'll give you is don't throw away these parts. It's very easy to want to just throw everything away. But if a part is still good and usable, you just never know. And of course, obviously, you can hold on to stuff forever, which can be also be a problem. But just for a little while, I would say just hold on to stuff just in case you ever need an extra part. You know, seeing how I kind of destroyed this manifold, you can see all those scratches. This is no good because those scratches will definitely layer air seep by even with the diaphragm on there. So this is junk. Can't really reuse this. But the mounting plates, this pressure switch I'm just going to toss. But, you know, the lever, just in case something goes wrong with the other one, I'll just toss this whole thing. But, I mean, honestly, this diaphragm is completely fine. Eh, it's a little elongated there, so maybe you won't hold on to it. But, again, if you don't have a part, it's kind of nice to have something in an emergency. Uh, this part that goes inside here, then the presser switch. Let's see if I can show you. See, it pushes the contacts. Nothing wrong with that. Again, is that going to break? Who knows? It's plastic, but then you have a backup. So I'm going to hold on to some of these things just because this stuff ain't isn't going to break. Got some extra screws in here, some fittings, which also could be used for other things. So I'm going to hold on to this stuff just because this is useful and then only end up throwing away this rather than the whole compressor or anything else. Thanks for watching the video. Catch you in the next one. Now I have a box to neatly store everything.